Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this Lexo driver. We're not just going to be looking at it. We're actually going to team it up with another drive. So these are two of the fastest drives what you can get on the market. And we're going to strike them together or raid them, depending on what you want to call it, and make them work as two as one. So we should be getting roughly double the speed. So we're going to have a look and see how they perform. And if you're interested in purchasing one of these, we've got links in the description just below. Before we go on to the main video, if you would do us a favor, click that like button, subscribe, click the bell as well. And that way you'll get notifications of new videos and live streams we do. Again, doing all these things helps support the channel and helping to support the channel allows us to release more videos, better quality videos and more content exclusively just for you. Okay, so we've got our two Lexar drives here. We're going to fit them into this Z690 motherboard from Gigabyte. It's a Z690 Gaming X motherboard. We've already got an SSD installed, obviously, to run Windows and so forth. We're going to run these drives and test them as if they're additional drives, because if we install Windows on them, it'll give us false results when we go down to testing, because Windows is constantly doing things. So we just have to basically remove the heat sink here. So on this case, we have to remove four screws in total. Okay, so once those four screws are undone, hopefully we can lift up this heat sink here. There we go. So now we can put the two SSDs in here. It can actually take an extra three. We're gonna connect two up here and here, and then go from there. So that it'll look like that. And then we'll have the heat sink back on top to keep these cool because they're going to go extra hot, obviously, with them running, especially at 7,400 megabytes per second each. Okay, as you can see, we've got the machine all set up. We've done some testing already, but we've got two drives inside the machine. And you can see we've got some nice RGB Lexor RAM on there as well. We've got the heat sink on. And we've done all the testing. So regarding the testing, we have got all of it done. Both drives have been tested up. You can maybe able to see on the screen, but we've set them up as drive D and E and done the testing. And as you can see, the results are pretty similar on both drives. So we've got seven, just over 7,100 megabytes on the read, 5,800 on the write on both drives using Crystal Disk Mark. And then on Atto, we're getting around about 6,600 on the read and 5,500 on the right. Bear in mind, these testing does come up slightly different depending on the board and different things you are using to test it on. So they do, and we have tested before on other boards, and we have been able to get over 7,400 megabytes on the read. So it just gives you a rough idea. Temperatures while it's been running on the tests vary, obviously depending on how much stress it's going. But on average, they're going, well, should I say on the peaks, they're going up to about 65 degrees with the heat sink on. We have done testing with these without heat sinks before, and they do get quite toasty. So I recommend a heat sink on top, which will keep it cool. And it will also allow it to run a little bit faster if it's cool, because otherwise they tend to thermal throttle so they don't overheat. But there we go. So that's basically the test results without them being raided together. Now we're going to raid them together and see on a comparison, what we get, I'm hoping it's um, going, if we're putting them both together, in theory, double the speed is 14,000 on the read. I'm going to realistically hope for around about 12,000 on the read. And on the right, if we were to double it, that comes to about 12,000. I'm going to say realistically, probably nine, nine and a half thousand on the right. That's what I'm hoping for. If we're getting any more than that, we hey. Okay, so we're going to create the RAID volume now. So combine the two disks together in what's called RAID 0 or striped mode. So to do that on this motherboard, bear in mind it's slightly different on most motherboards, but generally you go in the settings area, usually either under storage or ports or something along that lines, you'll find something, for example, on this board comes up with Intel rapid storage technology. You might see something about RAID or something like that. Again, every board is slightly different, but once you're in there, it'll give you the option to create a RAID and it also to shows you the name of the drive. And as you can see there, we've got an A data drive, which is our main C drive, and the two Lexar drives, which we are going to be basically connecting up together in a RAID. So we're gonna do a create RAID volume. 
it says select discs. So I'm going to select the first one, which is there. And then we're going to do the second one. Obviously make sure if there's anything on those drives, you back it up first, because when you raid drives together, it will create a new volume, which means anything on those drives before will be gone. So make sure if you're currently using those drives, back them up first because it will be wiped and make sure you don't choose the wrong drive. Otherwise you will wipe that drive. So there you go. You've got different options for stripe sizes, capacities, and different things like that. I'm going to leave it on the default setting. Okay. I'm going to call it volume one and leave it at that. So you can also change the raid level. That allows you to different things like striping and so forth. It means you have a duplication. So it copies everything what's on the one drive onto the other. So they're exact. You won't get any performance benefits from it though. So we're going to carry on with the striped mode, which is RAID zero, create volume and basically go from there. So you can see there, RAID volumes is created. It says RAID one and so forth. So in theory, when we boot the machine up in a few seconds, we should see the drive there and away we go. So I'm just going to restart the machine and it should pick it all up in theory. Okay. Now windows is up and running after we've created the raid, we have to go into the disc properties though. So device, not device manager, disk management. And once inside there, it should prompt you to initialize the disc. That's basically picking up that new disc you've created. So you just basically say, Okay. It should then show you the name of the disc there with the size, obviously striping it together doubles the size of the disc. So it's two discs. So two terabytes, obviously one times two is two. All right. And then you just go through the options next, next, choose the drive letter you want to call it and then name it. So we're going to call it Lexar Drive. So we know exactly what it is and then press next and finish. And now I'm going to run all the testing. So we'll come back to you in a few seconds, just to see what sort of speed we actually get. Okay. So I was hoping for 12,000 megabytes on the read and maybe nine and a half thousand on the right. How far off was I? We actually got over 14,000 megabytes on the read and 11,000 on the right, which is pretty much not far off a doubling of the speed. So you're basically getting the speed of both of them together and it's performing as it should at that speed. Got 14,000 megabytes, just to give you that in uh, basically comparison, a traditional hard drive, if you're lucky, will do round about a hundred megabytes per second. A standard solid state drive, the SATA based ones or M.2 SATA ones do 500. An NVMe drive, a decent one, maybe two to 3,000. A real top end one, if you've got Gen 4 capacity or capability, will do 7,000. But teaming these two up together, we've got 14,000 megabytes per second. That's a huge difference from going from an old traditional hard drive, which may have got 100, 150, if you really look, megabytes per second, you're up to 14,000. So you can basically install stuff, do stuff drastically faster than you could ever before. Again, some things may not be made to run at that speed, so they may still slow it down, but you have got the ability there, especially if you're copy copying stuff from one drive to another, doing productive work like Premiere Pro, and encoding and stuff like that, where you need the high speeds, you've now got potentially 14,000 megabytes on the read and the 11,000 on the right. That's drastic. And that's not just Crystal Disk Mark what's saying that. We're also getting similar results using Atto has given us just over 13,000 on the read and the right just under 11,000. So it gives you a rough idea. We are getting those speeds constantly with no issues temperature wise we didn't see any real increase in temperatures on there the average temperature we were getting probably a couple of degrees more nothing to really write home about so it was probably around about 65 to 68 degrees when both drives were under full load for roughly 30 minutes so that's more than acceptable but again make sure you've got a heat sink on these things because otherwise they're going to get very hot and potentially slow you down so yes you can go really fast with these drives, a lot faster than I ever would believe. 
Thank you for watching this video, everyone. It's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel, and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.